Hello, Canada. Welcome to It's Time for a Wake Up Call. Here's our first wake up call, and it's been an ongoing one. Uh, I'll just spend a, a few seconds here uh, talking about the federal government's uh, moving forward on their tough on crime agenda. You know, even Texas has stated this really isn't necessary. But uh, look, when they looked at the Canadian model and advised Canada against it. But then today, uh, October 26th, in the news release, Canada's homicide rate declines to a 44 year low. Uh, when this was raised, and one of the reasons the uh, feds are so bound and determined to spend this billions of dollars on their tough on crime uh, agenda. Uh, Public Safety Minister Vic Taves still maintains a number of that the number of crimes that go unreported is on the rise. However, uh, the, the homicide figures are reportedly uh, the most reliable indica indicator of overall crime rates because there aren't too many homicides that go unreported. So, you know, do we really need billions of dollars going into prisons? What do you think? Time to wake up? I think so. Okay, another wake up. Uh, I'm leaving some links uh, attached to this video so you can actually go to the news story and check things. Now, I'm not pro or anti long gun registry. I'm basically non plus on that. Uh, but in light of the stats that came out yesterday, uh, or today, I mean, on the decrease in uh, homicides, uh, that homicide rate is the lowest in 44 years. There's some interesting facts and figures on the long gun registry uh, at the link below where it uh, mentions firearms. What I am upset with is we as Canadians are expected to maintain our uh, certain aspects of our information for various time periods. I don't see the government doing the same thing. This sudden rush to purge all this information that we've spent over $2 billion collecting and refusing to share it with any provinces who have indicated they're interested in maintaining their own longer and registry type of program is just dictatorial. It's, there's nothing more, uh, there's nothing more than, than ideology there. You know, it's public information, we've paid for it, why should provinces now have to ding us again to rebuild their own program when those figures are available? Uh, um, that uh, makes no sense to me what, whatsoever. Uh, Prime Minister Harper uh, vowed when he was elected to work collaboratively with other bodies. I haven't seen any of that and I'm starting to get tired of it. So give up on the 30 second sound bites and verify a few of the things that you're being told in these 30 second sound bites by reading a few news stories. And, and not just one perspective of the news story, get a cross section so you really know what's going on. Here's another one we better wake up to because I think we're gonna be seeing a lot of this uh, in the next few years. Um, Two examples, the Wheat Board will be taking the federal government to court, uh, being that the federal government did not follow the due processes set out in the legislation, and they've made it very clear that they will change the legislation if they have to to win this. Uh, at the same time, Canada Post uh, will be challenging the constitutionality of the federal government's decision to legislate them back to work and to arbitration. Uh, so there's a second case. I see many more on the horizon and we, we're paying for it. As tax dollars, as taxpayers, we're paying for the federal government to uh, defend themselves in every time they break one of their own rules. The Wheat Board, as an example, uh, the legislation requires a plebiscite be held for all farmers to vote. Uh, and the constitutionality of uh, destroying collective bargaining rights 
uh, is it's going to court as well. And I suspect with this omnibus bill, we're going to see many, many more constitutional challenges. And we're paying for it. Taxpayers are paying the government uh, to defend their ideological perspective. So wake up, Canada. It's going to cost us money, lots of money, because I can see a lot of these cases coming up. So those are my wake-up calls of the day for today. And right now it's zero and three. Uh, three cases where we will, as taxpayers, be paying to help support a government who's pushing more ideology than they are policy. When uh, you're threatening to change legislation to get your way, that's an ideology-based mechanism. Uh, and now, to, to top things off, at the end of last week, we had uh, Lisa Raitt as a way to uh, protect uh, her decision on who can and can't strike about having the economy enshrined in the labor laws as an essential service. Uh, I don't see the connection between economy and essential service, but uh, she's prepared to uh, go as far as putting the economy into the labor law uh, to be protected as a social, as a uh, central service, which in essence will allow government to decide who can and who can't collectively bargain. Uh, and uh, that's giving a lot of power and a lot of rights away. I didn't see uh, the federal government running to Montreal and legislating all of those workers, uh, construction workers, uh, back to work. And that was more disruptive from my perspective than the post office strike was, or the post office rotating strike, which eventually became a lockout by Canada Post. But we didn't see Lisa going to Montreal and ordering people that were building new hospitals and infrastructure projects back to work. So uh, that's it for today. Wake up, Canada. Start paying attention to what's going around, going on around you, because there's. There's a lot of there's a lot more happening in this country than you get out of a 30 second soundbite. All right, just one man's opinion. Have a good night, folks. Bye bye.